Do you know how much the networks pay a year? One per per year for to for NFL rights to. What didn't Amazon pay something like ninety million or something for like Thursday Night Football? And it was it was just a second stream. Like yeah. it wasn't even like the real stream. The NFL gets one billion a year from CBS, one point one from Fox, and one billion from NBC. And for, what's what's ESPN play? for one year? I uh, it's not here for Monday night. It's probably a billion. It was, I think it was around a billion for Monday Cause night. Because NBC is paying for Sunday night football for nine hundred fifty million. <laughs> <laughs> They're making four billion a year just from TV partners. Is that just regular season, or does that include playoffs? I don't as well? know. No, yeah, playoffs are probably on top because that. that's what I was thinking. That's where players are actually going to end up kind of getting screwed over in this, right? Because yes. the new the the playoff adding another playoff game, like they're going to renegotiate, and that's going to be a massive deal. <sighs> oh, sorry, ESPN is paying one point one billion for Monday Night Football. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I respect it's 60, a kid's game. 60, <laughs> it's a kid's 65 game. 65 million a game, 20 million per hour. Hey, you should just be happy you get to play what we love playing in high school for a living. You should be happy you get that opportunity. I agree. I absolutely agree. But then that means the people that are running this team should be acting as if they're high school coaches. Then, if that's the case, if we're gonna if we're gonna go on the premise that the players should act like this is a kids game, well, then let's go on the premise that the owners should act like it's a kids game. That's why I hate when everybody starts attacking the players during this. The last CBA, I mean, I, let's be honest. When the lockout happened, okay, I was in the middle of the substance of abuse program. I couldn't drink for like twelve months going into the lockout. Then when the lockout happened, I had no test, so I was on like a hundred and forty day binge. I had no clue what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> negotiations I was too young to think anything but now that I'm really like digesting it all you gotta remember in the players locker rooms like the year or two after the CBA whenever you know on those trips home like four hour flight homes or flights home and there's no other really conversation that could happen and maybe there's been some wine drank or some beer drank and somebody who's in the NFL PA or wants to be in the NFL PA pops off about how we got screwed in the last CBA and then that leads into a conversation that goes into all of those things like the NFL PA knows that after this last CBA there was a lot of disgruntled players about things that were happening because a deal they thought got rushed to finish line I don't think that's going to happen this time I think it's very interesting they're trying to get it done early but boy this is so much money. So, so much money. Two questions. Yeah, buddy. So when you were doing the lockout, they stopped testing you. Oh, yeah. Did your time, like you had to be in there for what, two years or whatever? 27 months, yeah. 27 months. Did the time the clock stop yeah, when yeah. the lockout? Yeah, oh, yeah, so yeah. you had to continue oh, after. That suspended sucks. sentence, yeah. But after, <laughs> second question, do you like the idea of seven teams from each conference making the playoffs? Yeah, I don't mind it. Yeah, I love I, it. I don't mind it at all. For, strictly as a fan, I don't mind Steelers it. Would right. have, Steelers would have benefited greatly yeah i know that's i got the text from you (laughs) this morning from warren sharp uh sharp football by the way i have no idea the guy's been on the show yeah he has good stuff oh yeah uh if newly proposed playoff system were in place for the last 10 years we would have added five 10 win teams nine nine win teams six eight win teams and i think the issue that everybody has with expanding the playoffs is like well if they don't deserve it they shouldn't get in especially because this year with the nfc east right there was a chance that a team with a losing record was going to get in the playoffs so with that fresh on people's minds the thought of adding another team everybody's like well if a division stinks or something like that we don't need to add more terrible teams Warren Sharp came out and was like no no I mean there's a lot of good teams that don't make the playoffs these days 10 win teams not getting in like and them being able to get in now is is a huge plus if you win 10 games you should be in the playoffs any football fan is going to say this is a huge plus Uh, three games on Saturday three games on Sunday wildcard weekend it's like the whenever they play in London you wake up there's a game at 10 like it's the best day ever and but that wildcard weekend this past year I fully enjoyed it Mm -hmm. it's the best But as a former player and as a person that was in that locker room, I have to remember that there is a lot of guys who are just trying to make as much money in as short period of time as possible. And their bodies are taking damage, which, by the way, they know going into football is going to happen. They understand that there's an inherent risk whenever you play football. But right now, every single percent, every single half a percent that these players are trying to negotiate for is potentially changing a life for a long time. And I think that's why negotiations can get a little bit uglier once in a while. I I respect and am disgusted by the owners at the same time for not going for the 50-50 split. Because, like you said, that's just another thing thing they can grab in negotiations with offering up another half percent if they wanted to but no way if they give 50 50 then they're alluding to the fact that the players are worth 50 percent of the nfl success 
The owners don't think that, right? Right. That's why whenever they had the lockout or they had anything like that, like the thought the owners have is uh, we can plug and place anybody into these systems and we'll be able And I think even after seeing the XFL success, they're like, look, th- now – Granted, I don't know if the XFL success is going to sustain or whatever, but they had like four million people watching a game the first week, three and a half or something like that, two and a half. The NFL sees that, the owners see that, and they're like, listen, this is a plug and place operation. And I think they kind of lightened up on that thought because you, whenever they went after the uniform rules and the no dancing rules and the people are getting fined if their socks run all the way up, they wanted everybody to look and act the exact same way so they can plug and place players, right? That's what they wanted to take personalities out of the game. They wanted to take out the uh, individuality out of the game. They wanted it to be a completely team sport. So whenever this guy's out, we put a new guy in that's dressed the exact same, doesn't dance, doesn't do anything. It doesn't matter. Now they've lightened up on that because of how bad they look. But if you were to give a 50, 50 split with the players as the owners in their eyes, they're like, well, we don't think the players deserve an exact 50%. That one and a half percent on top of them is just a hundred percent, like a power trip. type. Oh yeah. Thing. And that's the way it goes. And that's, I mean, well, and that's been like kind of ingrained into the players too, because they all, it's all like, you know, the NFL doesn't need you. It's like what, like a lot of those guys say, it's like, hey, guess what? The game is going to go on without you, whether you like it or not. Yeah, you're just a piece of gum, man. Mm -hmm. Hey, whenever the flavor runs out on your particular piece of gum, we'll just go and pick another one out, and that thing will taste probably better than you (laughs) do. That's exactly their thought. That's their mindset. And that's why 51.5% is a very, very good deal compared to the 47 or 48 and a half percent is a very good deal compared to the 47 percent but boy the money is alarming